Hello, people. It's Poet, and we're playing the Stanley Parable. This is a game that I've wanted to play for a very long time, and I've never really had a chance to do it. Look at this! It's my computer! Um, but I'm going to have a chance today to play it, so I hope that it turns out okay. I don't know what the game is even really like. I know that there's a, a voice that talks to you or something, but that's about it. End is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the loading. The end is the end is loading. That's what it says. All right. Look at all these. I got two frames per second here. It doesn't even. Where where are those frames? Is it my mouse? Is the mouse the frames that are moving? Because this doesn't look like it's moving much to me. That loading bar. It's very ominous. Oh, a tick. I saw a tick. Come on, game. I turned. I cranked the graphics. Like this game has graphics, I don't know, does it? I cranked them. I cranked them to the highest possible anisotropic anti-aliasing eight times massive beastie. It's good, in other words. <laughs> I hope. I hope my computer could run it. When was this game made? I don't even know. All right, here we go. Click to skip. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Okay. Hi, Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Mm. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Yep. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Yeah. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. Yay. As though he had been made exactly for this job. I had a job like that. And Stanley was happy. Oh. Well, and then one sounds day, good then. something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something huh? he would never quite forget. Oh, no. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to What follow. is he to do? No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Yep. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. Eh? But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. What do I do? How do I... I can move? Do I have like a... Do I have a hand that I can like... I should have looked at the controls. Can I grab a pencil and sharpen it? Can I crouch? Oh! I can crouch. Can I, like, hide under a desk? <laughs> can I check messages on my phone? What can I do? Eh? I'm stuck. I can't push the chair? Really? If all I do all day is push buttons on a keyboard, what are all these files in here for? Huh? Where's the light switch? How come this room doesn't have a light switch and yet it has lights? Huh? Explain that one, developers of Stanley Parable. Well, I guess I can leave this office now. Hey. Hello. Can I go in here? I can't. Can't get into employee number 429's office. How come employee number 429 gets a window? Huh? What's so special about him? I am two numbers greater than he is. If the higher the number, the worse it is. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps eh? he had simply missed a memo. The horror links at, at my soul. All I desire... Re... re red... What is that? Release? What the? <laughs> what is that? Oh, what did the narrator say? I completely ignored him. Oh well. Can I? What can I do in here? 
Are there, hold on, are there controls? Like, are there keyboard and mouse? Okay, edit keys. Raw mouse input. Huh? Let me see. Back duck. Okay, I got that. Use. I had. Uh, yeah, I've been pressing that. Take a screenshot. Ooh. Wow, these keys though. There's not a whole lot you can do. <laughs> Actions. One button. Okay. So then I'm not missing anything. That's all that I wanted to know. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Are you under here? No. Under here? Partition Corp. Hmm. They make partitions. Who... What does that say? Who... Who farted? Huh. I guess this is the... The greatest guy in the office. What is that? What's on the screen there? Can't tell. Hmm. Stanley went oh! around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Hey, you know what? I'm advancing in my own way. I don't need to advance no story. Can I jump? I can't jump, and that annoys me. Uh, what does that say over there on the mug? I can't quite make out what the word says on the mug. Mile or something like that. I like work. I just hate my boss. Huh. Can't open that. Can't open any of these. What about these? No. These? No. Oh! No. Okay. I'm gonna go back to my office. Wait, how come my door closed? <gasps> and now it's locked. What? What's going on? What do these papers say? They're like glowing. Why are these pages glowing? Is that my Max Graphics makes pages glow? Is that what the real world is like? Hello? Press buttons. Hello? Huh? Is that blood on the floor? I can't open any doors. Okay, what about these? Nope. Hmm. Can't sharpen a pencil. Wait! Username access. Beep. Hmm. Someone got fired. Their stuff is at the door. Fixing a light? Hmm. I hate Mondays. Someone's got a case of the Mondays. Oh! No! Oh, I can open it again. I want the opportunity to go back if I wanted to. When Stanley came hey. to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Crap. Is this a test? Like, the narrator tells me to go to the left and everybody goes to the right? To say, like, ha ha ha! I messed up! The guy! I will go to the left, okay? He tells me what to do, and I am Stanley. I, if I'm told something, I do it. Can't open. Nope. What's this? Yellow box? Nope. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley mm. decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a coworker. <laughs> Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Uh, let's see. What can I see in, in here? Maybe. Uh, the meeting room on floor 400 next X. Uh, do not alter without consultant whiteboard manager. Rest in peace, Fawns. Hey, 
tomorrow, complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write next day's agenda. Refleet. Ah, refleet? Maybe that means repeat. <laughs> Employees. Number 417-405-491-416-431 and Jim. <laughs> uh, let's see. What does this say? Stand... Huh? Stand or... I can't read this writing very well. Just Something standalone graphs, is that what it says? Something stando right standard standardize graphs is not cost efficient, maybe. Is that what it says? Okay. Who moved my desk? Eh? Okay, let's keep moving. Is this story going to be like the whole story you're fi trying to figure out where everyone is and then turns out that it's Saturday or something? Broom closet. Huh. That door pushed me aside. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Yeah, you do that. Oh, broom. Can I pick up the broom? No. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. Can I reach no that thing? To still be here. I have a feeling that the narrator is getting annoyed that I'm it still in. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. Yeah, but that's what I was thinking. He's literally just standing there doing sweet fa. Aha! 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 Are you are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer it... me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. Because it's funny to hear what you say, that's why. I, f I feel I like realize I've been in here for so long that maybe I can right? do something. If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. It Did said you know, broom closet on the door. Literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Hmm. Can I, like, grab Maybe pliers? You, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friend. <laughs> oh, did you get the broom closet ending? Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really. Hey! Stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. Hey! But he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> that is very mean. I resent I you, narrator. The conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. Heh. <laughs> You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. When no. In a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Oh, God. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. I'm still here? He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please huh? remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics right. and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming right, 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 right. so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Oh. But the person who replaced me is just as stupid. Actually, I'm going to turn his voice up a bit. Just a bit. Right. 
So the guy who replaced me is just a stupid, still standing in this broom closet. Hmm. How come that looks like the radioactive symbol? Must be just a coincidence. What is that orange thing? Is that like, um... Maybe a stapler? Maybe a nail gun of some kind? I'm gonna do it. This is like one big step for a man. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee <laughs> you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. The person who came before me died. Watch what you say about Coming him. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. When given the choice of walking up or down now, clearly... I want to see what's in the basement. Fire hose. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. Mm -hmm. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. No. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet huh? when he looked down? What? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Right! And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! Yay! This oh? is all a dream. It is? Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I mm. may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. Right. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently oh! float above the ground. Amazing! Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. Oh, man! And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Oh yeah. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, oh. who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? But, but I flew! If he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Right. Did the voice not see him float and make the right. magical stars just a moment ago? Magical How else stars! Would the voice explain all that. This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just. He would prove it. He mm -hmm. would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Right. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. Oh. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. Right. I wish it yeah. to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the Let me escape the, the narration. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my He's life married? exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. 
Everything will be fine. Is this fine. the broom closet ending? I am okay. Nope! <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just <gasps> someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh, no! That was terrifying! This is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> what? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what oh, isn't. Oh no! I died. It was to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and, by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, mm -hmm. so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body, and then she turned and ran. She did call the ambulance or whatever, right? Like, that that was a thing she did? She didn't just leave me there, right? Okay, so that was, that was one ending, I think. I hope that wasn't the broom closet ending. But we'll see you next time on the Stanley Parable. Bye-bye.